Hi, I've got another example here in my series on vertical motion which can offer up something different to the previous tutorials that we've looked at. So what we've got here is a stone is thrown upwards from the ground at a speed of 14 meters per second and assuming no air resistance and taking g to be 9.8 meters per second per second I've got to find the greatest height the stone is above the ground and in part be the time of flight. So how do we do a problem like this? Well what we need to do is a little sketch first of all. So just draw the ground and we've got the particle being projected up from the ground with a speed of 14 meters per second. So I'll put that in something like that. We'll have our particle drawn in as well. Here it is here. Okay. And the particle is going to clearly rise into the air. Let's just put it up here. Up into the air, instantaneously come to rest, and then is going to come back down again. Now I know that these two dotted lines should be on top of one another, but I'm just moving it away just so we can get some idea of the kind of up and downness of it. Okay, what else do we know? Well, we know that at the very top, when it reaches its maximum height, its velocity is going to be zero meters per second. And we've got the acceleration due to gravity, which we're taking as acting downwards. That's going to be 9.8 meters per second per second. So when it comes to finding out how high it rises, well, we better give that some letter. I'm going to call it H for the maximum height. That is from the ground here to up here. Okay, so how are we going to get that greatest height? Well, we've got constant acceleration, and so therefore we can use one of the Suvat equations, the equations of constant acceleration. But before we do that, we've got to set out what we know. And so first of all, we're going to put down that we've got S, the displacement, U, the initial velocity, V the final velocity, A the acceleration, and T the time. Put down our SUVAT variables. If we know them, now we need to set up a positive direction, and I would always set that up from where I started throwing, which in this case was here, and I'm throwing upwards, so I would have positive in the upward sense. Okay? So what would our variable s be equal to in this case? Well, s is the displacement. And if we want to find the greatest height, well, that's just going to be h, h meters. u, the initial velocity, well, that would be the 14, 14 meters per second. The final velocity, when it reaches its greatest height, will be 0. So I have 0 meters per second there. Acceleration, well that acts downwards against the positive sense, so that's going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And as for the time, well we don't know that, we don't need it for this part, so we'll just leave it unanswered. So we need S and we want an equation that doesn't involve T, so what would it be? Well it would be v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So if we use that, all we need to do is put in our values. So v will be 0, we've got therefore 0 squared equals u squared, which we know is 14, 14 squared plus 2 times a, which is minus 9.8. And then we've got s, which is the maximum height here, h put it in as h. So we've got 0 equals 14 squared is 196 and if we double minus 9.8 we get minus 19.6 so we get minus 19.6 h. 
If we add 19.6H to both sides and then divide the 196 by that, we'll end up with H equaling 196 divided by 19.6. And that goes in nice and cleanly as 10 metres. So the greatest height okay, is going to be 10 metres. So that's part A. Now for part B, this is an interesting one because we can answer it in several ways. Now some people would find the time to go to the maximum height and then just double it because it's going to take exactly the same time to come down. So you could use the ideas we've got up here find the time by using say v equals u plus a t and then just doubling that time. But it's not a method that I would tend to use. It's got some drawbacks as you'll see later on when we throw things off a balcony in another video. Now what I would do would set up my s u v a t variables again and I would look at the motion from the very start. Now the displacement s when the particle, the stone in this case, goes up and then back down, the displacement would be zero, zero meters. u would be the same as before, 14 meters per second. v, well when it comes back down it's actually moving in the opposite sense to what we've got here. Same speed but acting downwards so its velocity will be minus 14 meters per second. As for the acceleration, well even though we're throwing it up and it's coming down, the acceleration throughout this problem is going to be negative 9.8 so we'll put minus 9.8 meters per second per second. And it's time of flight that we're after, t. So what equation could I use then for these variables? Well, the one that I'd like to use, because it's the easiest, is v equals u plus a t. And if we use this, v is minus 14, u is 14, and then we have plus and a is minus 9.8 and then we have the time t. Now if you were to add 9.8 t to both sides and add 14 to both sides you'd have 9.8 t equals 14 and 14 which is 28. So to get t we just simply divide 28 by 9.8 and what we get is exactly 20 over 7. 20 over 7 seconds. I won't change that to a decimal because divide by 7 is going to give me a very long decimal which I'll have to approximate. So 20 over 7 seconds. That wasn't the only way that we could have got the time. Here's another way that we could have done it. We could have used say s equals ut plus a half a t squared. And if you're doing this one, well, you're going to get involved with quadratic equations. So that's why I wouldn't really be tempted to use it. But we'll just do it for the sake of it so you can see how it would fall out. We know that s is 0, u is 14, and we're after the time t. Then we've got plus a half a, a being minus 9.8, times the t squared. So if we divide the half into minus 9.8, well that's going to be 4.9. And we can factorize this. So we would have 0 equals, and we could pull t out as a common factor. So it would have t bracket 14 minus 4.9t. Now when you've got your quadratic that's factorized, we can say that either of these two factors equal 0. So we could say that therefore t equals 0 or the 14 minus 4.9 t equals 0. 
Well, we know that t has to be greater than 0. It's going to obviously take more than 0 seconds to move up there and back down again. t equals 0 is in fact the first time when the displacement is 0. So it has answered the question, when is the displacement 0? When t is 0. But it's not the value that we're really interested in. It's from here. So if we were to add 4.9t to both sides, we would therefore have 14 equals 4.9t. And then if we divide 14 by 4.9, we end up with the same result, obviously, that we had over here, 20 over 7. 20 over 7 seconds, the exact value. OK. Well, I hope that's given you some idea then how to do problems like this. Now, in my next video, what I'm going to be showing you is projecting a ball from a balcony. And we're going to look at how long it takes to come to the ground. And this is one where it's very important that we certainly look at displacement to be able to do the question efficiently. So. If you're stuck on problems like that, hopefully that will sort you out.